Thanks, Jordan, and good morning. Now, today's a very interesting game between the Missouri Tigers and Florida Gators. The Tigers actually just drove by right in front of me as they head into the stadium in their buses. There have been many changes for the Missouri football program over the years since the 1960s. Expansions, the Memorial Stadium, changing of conferences, but one thing has stayed the same, a rolling on the field for the Tigers at Faro. Though firework-related injuries are significantly down the past few decades, these fireworks here can still cause harm and injury. According to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, 11,000 Americans were injured by fireworks last year. Now that accounted for just 0.04% of all injuries in the United States. To compare, uh, close to 123,000 people were injured by baseballs in 2016. Thanks, Jordan. We're out here live just behind the Hearn Center, and we'll start walking back this way. There's quite a bit going on already this morning. A lot of people out. Breakfast on the menu, obviously, as it's still early. 3 o'clock kickoff, but a lot of people coming up before. September 16th. And September 23rd. Two days that seemed so long ago for the Missouri Tigers. Two blowout defeats in back-to-back -back weeks in September left the Tigers reeling. But it is a much different story now, two weeks into November. It is obvious the Missouri football team has had a turnaround this season, but that turnaround may have very well started right here in this room. It's a turnaround, and I don't like it. I want to win right now, but that's not the hand I'm given. That inspired post-game rant came on September 23rd. Seven weeks later, the Tigers are winning, and by a lot. We're tired of losing. You know, no one likes to be one in five. You know, that's, that's awful on any team. And, uh, you know, coaches, like, scrap all that, you know, come back and let's work. You know, we're moving in the right direction, like I said, however many weeks ago that was, making progress in a lot of areas. We rounded all together, all the players, the seniors, and realizing, you know, we got we to gotta finish it out right. And this is this is just another step in the, in the process. People can hit hot streaks and get going, and that's what we did. The way we're playing now is how we knew we should be playing. From one in five to one win away from bowl eligibility. It's a great opportunity ahead of us. And uh, we plan on making the best of that opportunity. It's huge. Uh, it's one of our goals. We got one more to get eligible. Uh, but we want to finish this off, this, this, finish the season out strong. We want to be plus one at the end of every game, get better every week, see where the coins lay. So positive, positive at atmosphere. Everybody know what we can do. Just go out and compete every day. And with two games left on the schedule, the Tigers are not looking back. At the end of the day, why run short when you can run long? Evan Lachnett, Cam Lloyd Sports. You want me to count down? Uh -oh. <laughs> One of the needs that we were seeing within the community was dealing with children in grief. There weren't a lot of resources for it, and they were kind of the forgotten mourners. I couldn't do it. <laughs> This camp was developed by our hospice to be able to serve families in our community and help give parents the resources they need to help with their own grief as well as their children's grief, but also to for children to come um, meet with other children who have lost a loved one and create a sense of normalcy and help them cope with their grief. Camp Magic is so helpful for kids and everybody forgets kids when they're breathing. It's the socialization with somebody else to be there with you, to help you, that brings up an issue that maybe you can't bring up yourself, but they can. Yeah, I feel that way. Yeah, it's okay to feel this way. Especially when it's somebody that you love so much. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Oh, I didn't get to see him do it. My grandson is a participant again this year. Uh, it did him so much good last year that we asked to come back. When my husband passed away, Owen was very close to him, and so it gave him an outlet to get his anger out and, his, and gave him steps to channel his anger, his loss, his ways of doing it. It gave him confidence to talk about it. Parents have shared that they saved the memory boxes that they make and that they are excited to come back and do the ropes course with the Parks and Rec, but also get to have a safe place to express their grief with other children. Some good news for residents of Boone County. Right, a recent study shows residents of Boone County have one of the longest life expectancies of any county in Missouri. KOMU 8's Evan Lochnett is live in the studio to tell us more about the results of the study and why it continues a positive trend. So, so maybe living in Boone County counteracts bad diet choices. Or <laughs> yeah. is, is that, that what, what you're that telling is? us? I don't think it's oh. exactly what oh. the study okay. says. I think you say. still you have to put your effort in. Okay. Eat more but, pizza. 
Not. I mean, that sounds good to me. Yeah. But. And now it's obvious Mizzou football has struggled in the month of September. But as the Tigers had a bye week this week, other SEC schools show Missouri fans they are not the only ones suffering. We start in Baton Rouge, LSU taking on Troy from the Sun Belt Conference. Troy up 10-0 in the second half, make it 17-0. Jordan Chun scores the short TD, Troy up 17-zip. Then in the fourth quarter, Josh Anderson scores a rushing TD, putting Troy up 17 points in Death Valley at night. This is unthinkable, unthinkable. LSU would make a comeback attempt in this one, trailing just three, but Danny Edling throws an interception. Troy beats LSU 24 21. Troy was paid nearly a million dollars to beat LSU on its homecoming. To Alabama now, Ole Miss taking on the Crimson Tide, and this one was ugly from the start. Bo Scarborough opens up the scoring in the first quarter with this TD run, 7 0 Bama. On the next possession, Shea Patterson throws the pick. The wideout gives no help. Levi Wallace returns it 35 yards. Nice blocks along the way. Bama up 14 to nothing. And they do not look back from there. Bama dismantles Ole Miss 66 to 3. The most points Alabama has scored in a game since 1979. And they say making it in the Big Apple can be a tough task for anyone. Or apparently anything. Last night, one recycling bin saw that firsthand. We go to the Bronx. Brent Gardner is at the plate. He's going to strike out looking. He's not happy with the call. The pitch looked like it might have been a little low and outside. After an animated conversation with the ump, he would return to the dugout, and it would not be pretty. Oh, my. He just absolutely abuses this poor recycling bin, and, I mean, it's just relentless. He could have used that swing at the plate, honestly, but the Yankees have yet to release the status of the bin, but it would appear it is heading to the DL. Fortunately, it looks like it is nothing a little duct tape can't fix.